So I just got my hands on probably the most insane DDR5 RAM kit I have ever seen. Uh, probably the craziest RAM kit in general too. So insane that I can't even really show you just how crazy it actually is. But even though I don't have an Intel system to actually f show this kit off fully, it did get me thinking about a question I've had for a while now. Since DDR5 is technically dual channel already, is it worth just getting a single high capacity module and maybe saving a buck? Or like with DDR4, are you gonna be leaving some real gaming performance on the table by not getting at least two of the things? Well, if you've been thinking the same question or just wanna see these ridiculous EVO 5 modules from Gale in action, then let's just get right into it. Right after I get into this ridiculously good ad spot from our sponsor, PC Builder. PC Builder is a service currently available at Computer Mania here in South Africa that makes buying or building an awesome gaming system an absolute breeze. Just choose the games you wanna play, pick a budget that doesn't make your wallet cry, and PC Builder does everything else for you. PC Builder will tell you how many juicy frames you'll be able to get out of your new system at various resolutions and settings, and it helps you customize the build as much as you want. See a part or a peripheral that you like better, grab it and PC Builder will update everything accordingly. PC Builder will also keep track of stuff like compatibility and power requirements for you, so if you do accidentally switch out to a part that won't work with the rest of the system, PC Builder will let you know and give you a list of other parts that will. PC Builder and Computer Mania will build the system, install Windows along with a free month of Xbox Game Pass for you, and test and benchmark it to make sure that it's ready to game as soon as you get your hands on it. All of their builds come standard with a two-year warranty, almost double compared to the competition, and each part in the system is also still covered by their manufacturer warranties. Warrantyception! Check out PC Builder at Computer Mania right now using the link in the description, or if you want to pick up any of the parts featured in this video, or anything else for that matter, grab it all at Take Lot, also linked down below the like button. Okay, so along with a bunch of other very important but kind of technical stuff that channels like Gamers Nexus have already covered way better than I ever can, let's just take a quick look at what DDR5 is bringing to the table, since that's obviously going to be important when we get to testing. In a nutshell, DDR5 is just playing way faster much faster transfer speeds and higher memory bandwidth, and a healthy boost to clock speeds too, depending on the modules in question, of course. Timings aren't as tight yet as they can be, but even those will get there eventually. Along with that, DDR5 modules ship with their own like power management modules on the DIMMs themselves instead of having it on the motherboard, and they're generally a lot more efficient too. As for the part that triggered the whole question behind this video in the first place, DDR4 modules, without getting too technical about it because I actually want to make a shorter video for once, use a single channel for communication between all the bits and bobs. So, if you're only running one DDR4 module, you're running in single channel mode, and by adding another module to go dual channel has proven to boost system performance overall. But DDR5 is different in that instead of putting all of its bit eggs into one basket, it splits them into two channels. These two channels aren't just like combining uh, two DDR4 modules into one, it's more like taking that one module and splitting its bandwidth in half with one channel handling each half. Uh, I know, probably a bit confusing, but all we really need to know here is that DDR5 modules are in very simplified terms, dual channel all on their own. And if you're like me, you heard that and thought that you might be able to get away with just a single module and still get about the same performance out of it as you would with like two lower capacity modules or something. Which is why this video exists, because you know I tested that theory and the results are uh, pretty interesting. But before we jump into the benchmarks, can we just take a moment to appreciate this monstrous kit Gale trusted me to play around with for a bit. These kits are rated to go all the way up to 8,000 megahertz, which is a clock speed I can't even wrap my head around right now. And neither can AMD apparently, which is why the Ryzen 7000 system I used for testing can only really handle 6,000 megahertz right now. The new Intel systems can handle much more than that though, so if you're with Team Blue, you'll actually be able to get the most out of these things. They're also available in versions with latencies as low as CL32, which by current DDR5 standards is right in the sweet spot. But let's be honest here, as impressive as the specs these things pack are, they seemingly exist for one reason and one reason only, to be as bonkers as possible. Each module has two friggin' fans built right into them, and both along with massive like diffusion strips on top is RG blinged out the bunghole. Like seriously, if there was ever an RGB RAM competition, these things would take the cake every single time. Unfortunately, as with a lot of these showcase level products, most of that is a bit gimmicky. As show-stopping as that RGB is, especially around the fans, which looks so good, uh, there are gaps in the shroud where the LEDs shine through like tiny neon lights uh, 60 centimeters from your face, 
and it's a bit distracting to say the least. And speaking of distracting, those awesome looking tiny little fans go hard and they don't quit. I spent a long time trying to figure out how to set a fan curve for them or even to just stop them entirely, but I couldn't find any way to do that without just like sticking something in there and breaking them, which I've wanted to do on more than one occasion because they're loud as hell. And it's not like they're really doing all that much. In my testing, it did show that uh, it, the fans lower temps by like a, a couple of degrees, but nothing to get too excited about. So unless uh, Gale releases some software to control the fans, I hope you like wearing headphones. That being said, gimmicky or not, these things look absolutely sick. They're uh, kind of big for one thing, measuring in at seven millimeters thick and about 5.4 centimeters high. So you'll have to keep your CPU clearance, uh, cooler clearance in mind, but I like how big and in intimidating they look. The shroud is pretty gamery, but it looks and feels premium and I love the crazy RGB and overall I just love these things, even though they're a bit impractical, gimmicky and just completely ludicrous. But that's enough of that. This isn't a review, we have some spicy numbers to look at and I think it's about time we get right to it. For our test system, we're using AMD's Ryzen 9 7900X, cooled by a 240mm AIO from Cooler Master, AMD's RX 6900XT, Crucial Speed 5 Plus for storage, Antec Signature 1000W power supply, and it's all slotted into MSI's Pro X670P Wi-Fi motherboard. For our RAM, we'll be using the Beastly 32GB module uh, kit of Gale's EVO 5 that we just drooled over, and a single 32GB module of Crucial's ZDR5. Both kits were tested at 5400 MHz uh, and were running the exact same CL38 timings. F clock was manually set to 1800 and U clock was set to match memory clock. So basically, unless I screwed anything up majorly, which is entirely possible, we should have a clear answer about whether two sticks of DDR5 is in fact better than just one. So let's rock. Oh, and I'm also gonna toss in the results from the Evo kit running as fast as I can get it to go on the system, just for the hell of it. All right, let's kick things off with Cinebench, a test that is pretty notorious for not showing great memory scaling, and wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what we've got. Nothing too special to see here. The Blender benchmark has a pretty similar reputation for not uh, showing all that great scaling, and again, that seems to be the case here too. But at least here's the first case where the two sticks show at least a small victory over the single stick. 7-Zip, on the other hand, has historically favored memory configurations quite a lot, and this is where the theory uh, goes off the rails a bit, with the dual Gale kit walking out with a pretty demanding lead in co the compression results, and to a smaller but no less interesting extent, the decompression results too. Moving on to our synthetic gaming benchmarks in the form of Unigen Superposition and 3D Marks Time Spy, things start to get a little more interesting. In both tests, it's actually the single module that walks out with the overall win, albeit a relatively small one. And it's only in Time Spy with the souped up Gale kit that we see anything approaching a meaningful victory, but obviously that doesn't count. What does count is real gaming performance, so that's up next. And as you'll see from the charts, it's looking pretty good for our theory. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cyberpunk, and F122, even though our dual memory kit does come out ahead of the single stick in all three cases, it was only by an extremely small margin. Out of all three of those games, the biggest win came from F122, and even there, the two sticks were only about 2.9% faster than the single stick. So, job's done. You don't need more than one DDR5 module to get all the juicy frames you want, right? Ah, uh, well, not quite. Apparently, while some games uh, don't seem to care all that much either way, others definitely do. Both Hitman 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider saw the two modules take a pretty substantial lead over the single module, with both showing a 10% overall improvement to average FPS, while the Riftbreaker also saw a more than modest 9.5% uplift. So that throws a bit in the, of a wrench in the cogs, but not nearly as much as in Spider-Man Remastered, where having two modules instead of one got us our highest uplift yet of 13.8%, which is definitely something to write home to your dog about. And even though the numbers for the rest of the games tested weren't necessarily all that impressive, the two modules did consistently outpace the single module in all of them, whether by 4.7% in Far Cry 6 or all the way up to 7.1% in God of War. When it comes to real games, it seems clear from this testing at least, that even though you're not always going to see massive gains in every game, 
The old adage of two modules are better than one still applies to varying degrees with DDR5. But even then, with all of the numbers tallied up, our kit of two modules only outperformed the single module by 6.3% overall, which depending on the kit you're looking at, should easily be a number you can live with if you're on a tight budget or find a great deal on a single EDR5 module. So basically, even though you're probably gonna wanna grab another module eventually, you can still more than get away with just a single one without having to worry too much about losing out on a couple of extra frames while you save up. And yeah, hope you guys found this little experiment as fun to watch as I did putting it together. And remember to check out PC Builder at Computer Mania to buy or build the gaming system of your dreams and go get all of your other things over at TakeLot, both linked down below. All right, see you guys in the next one. Cheers.